Hello everybody, hopefully you're all having an amazing creative day. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the EOS R5 and I'm gonna show you how to optimize your autofocus settings to get super sticky autofocus because I recently got a comment on one of my videos. I've had the R5 for over a year and have a few third party lenses. My biggest issue is when trying to track a subject. Example, a red male cardinal perched on a shepherd's hook in the winter, nothing behind it but snow. The R5 refuses to stay focused on the bird and kept searching and getting stuck on the snowy background. Because of that issue, I've hardly used my 4K camera. It can't seem to find the subject even with nothing behind it. I've brought it into the camera store with a lens and they can't seem to find anything wrong with it. Even sent the first body I had into Canon, nothing. What could I be doing wrong? So I thought, hey, why not show you guys, girls, photographers, videographers, content creators, my menu settings so that you can copy the menu settings or at least get a better understanding of how I set up my menu so that you can set up your camera to be similar so you get super sticky autofocus as well. I have not had any issues with autofocus with the R5. I think it's pretty awesome, but then again, it all depends on your settings. If you have some settings that aren't right, maybe the camera is confused and doesn't know what to focus on. So let's jump into the menu. But before we do that, I wanna invite you to subscribe to the channel. I've got a lot more content on the R5 the R, the R7. I talk about photography and videography and photography skills and all that kind of stuff. So if that's what you're into, definitely subscribe to the channel. So, all right, before we even jump into the menu settings, I got a video right there about how to update the firmware on the EOS R5. Now, when this camera first came out, it was pretty good, but Canon did a great job adding firmware to this camera to make the tracking and the autofocus even better. So if you haven't done that, I would recommend watch that video first and then come back and finish watching this video. All right, now we'll get into the menu. All right, so let's take a look at this menu. We have our screen recorder here and we're gonna figure out how to set up the R5 to have the super stickiest autofocus you can imagine. It's gonna just lock onto your subject and won't let it go. So first thing we have here is AF operation and you definitely wanna put this on servo. Now, one shot means when you push the shutter button down halfway, the camera will focus. When you push the button down all the way, it'll take the shot. So it's not continuously focusing, it just focuses until you push the button down halfway and then it stops. So birds, obviously they're erratic, they're jumping around all over the place. So you wanna keep it on servo because servo means the camera will continuously focus on whatever the autofocus point is trained on and it won't stop. Even if you take the shot, it'll just continue tracking everything. So you definitely want that on servo. AF method, now you have all these different options, but all you really want is tracking. Just leave it on tracking and you should be good to go. Subject to detect, I have it on people because I shoot portraits, but you definitely want to put it on animals. Now, this camera is pretty smart, right? If you have it set to animals, it's not gonna track people. If you have it set to cars, it's not even gonna recognize people or animals. So make sure you have it set to what you need. Now, the, I hope in the future, Canon puts a little switch on the outside of the camera so you can switch it from people to animals to cars or whatever on the outside of the camera. That would be super handy because I know certain situations, let's say you're shooting a dog show, right? You wanna shoot the dogs, you wanna shoot the people, but if you're tracking people, you can't track the dogs. Anyway, it's a bit cumbersome to go in the menu and have to change it all the time. Now, eye detection, definitely keep that enabled. I'll show you an example later. There's a difference between having eye detection on and off. Even if you're tracking animals, the camera will recognize the animal's eye. All right, so you definitely want to keep that enabled. Now, continuous autofocus, definitely set that to enabled because you want the camera to continually focus. Now, touch and drag autofocus settings. You definitely want to go in there and enable this because this will allow you to use your thumb or finger to use the LCD screen on the back of your camera to move around your focus point. So enable that. So I have my position set to relative. There's also absolute. The difference is relative is when you swipe to the right, the focus point will move to the right. When you swipe to the left, focus point will move to the left. If you have it on absolute, that means that the, the right side of the LCD is relative to the right side of your viewfinder and the left side is relative to the left side of your viewfinder. So depending on where you tap on your screen, your focus point will jump around relative to where it is on the LCD. So I don't like that. So I keep it on relative and then active touch area, I have it set to the right side. and. I find that using my thumb to move around the focus point on the back of the R5 is a lot faster than using the joystick. I know some people love that joystick, but once you get used to using the back of the screen, move your focus point around, it's so much faster than using the joystick. So that's just something to keep in mind. So we click there and we are good to go. Now, tab two, anything here, manual focus peaking, focus guide, focus assist beam, not necessary. Here we go, tab three, this is important. 
So you have your case one, case two, case three, case four, and I think you can like go in there and customize it, but I feel like case two is the best. Continue to track subjects, ignore possible obstacles. So in the situation with the person who left a comment, there was snow and the cardinal, maybe you had your camera set to case three, where it says instantly focus on subjects suddenly entering the AF point. So maybe if a snowflake was behind, the bird or in front of the bird, the camera jumped to that thinking that it had to track that. So if you have it set to number three, it's super jumpy with the autofocus settings. If you have it set to two, it's super sticky and versatile, versatile multi-purpose mode. I never use it. Number four, for subjects that accelerate and decelerate quickly. I never use that. Of course, like if you're shooting track and field or something, it might be handy. But if you're shooting birds, oh, let's go back here. If you're shooting birds, case number two, that's the way to go. And then number four, lens, electronic menu, switch tracking subjects. Okay, for switching tracked subjects, you can have it here to switch subjects or initial priority. I have it set to initial priority, which makes it even stickier. So what this does is once you, you set up something for the camera to track, it's gonna stick to that subject matter. If you have it here set to one or two, especially with two, the, the camera's more likely to jump and track whatever else it thinks is, is a face or a bird. So just set that to zero and it'll be a lot stickier. So let's hit okay and get out of here. Lens drive, uh, limit AF methods, uh, no, 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 nothing else here. Initial servo, focus ring, uh, okay. So I think we covered all the bases to get super sticky autofocus with the R5. Now, let's load up a picture of a Cardinal and test this out. All right, so now, as you can see, we have a cardinal on the computer screen on a white backdrop. Photo credit will be right here because I don't want to be that photographer who doesn't give photo credits. We have the old 85 f1.2 EF lens on the camera. This is a notoriously slow focusing lens. And we have the settings on the camera that we just set up and we have a screen recorder. So let's see how this camera automatically tracks birds. So there we go. As you can see, no problem tracking the bird's eye. It's not going on to the background. It's not moving around anywhere else. We have no issues whatsoever. Now, here's something we can do. If we go into the menu settings and we're gonna go to, where was it? Continuous autofocus, eye detection disabled. And we go back here. Now it's tracking the Cardinal's head instead of the eye. Right, so what you want to do is make sure you have eye enabled because obviously you want the animal's eye to be in focus. So let's enable that. And the camera recognizes the cardinal's eye. And there we go. Now let's try something else. We're going to go here and we're going to go subject to detect. We're going to vehicles. And see, it's not tracking anything. So you got to make sure you are in animal tracking. There we go. So. So thank you for the question and uh, there you go. That's how you track birds and that's how you set up your camera to be super sticky. And of course, if you wanna track people instead of birds, just change it to people and it'll be super sticky on people's eyeballs. All right, so here we have a photo I shot in Cuba of two people pulling a boat out of the water with a storm in the background. And I picked this photo to show you the touch to track option on the R5. So we have tracking enabled. If we hit the Q button here, we have Enabled here, you can also disable eye tracking by accident, so be careful how you touch it. So we're gonna get out of here, and all we have to do is touch the boat, and it's going to track the boat. You can see the square box around the boat. If we touch the clouds, the camera makes a bigger box trying to track the clouds. But let's go and click on the boat, and I'm gonna loosen up the tripod here, and you can see the camera has no problem tracking the boat or the people. So if you wanna touch something on the screen to track, you can always do that if the camera is having trouble achieving autofocus for whatever reason. If it can't track something, just touch the screen and tell it what you want it to track. And it locks on pretty good. So there you go. All right, Gina Marie Photography, hopefully that helps you out. Now you can track your birds and use your 4K camera with, uh, with no issues. Now, if all these menu settings still haven't fixed anything, there are still a couple of other issues these are more mechanical um if you notice on the back of the adapter let's touch to track this because it's tracking my face on the back of the adapter you have these metal contacts up here let's track the adapter there we go 
You'll notice these metal contacts and those metal contacts are also on the back of the lens. So you have contacts on both sides of the adapter and the lens. So maybe your adapter is faulty and it doesn't work, or maybe the contacts here are dirty or corroded. You can take a little WD-40 and try and wipe them off. And it might be that the, the signal coming from the camera isn't passing through the adapter onto the lens and that's why you're not getting your, your good focus or your good tracking. So that could be a potential issue. Now that's a different type of thing. I would maybe talk to the camera store or some kind of technician about that. But if you just take a little bit of WD-40 and wipe the contacts, you should be okay. Just make sure they're dry before you, you know, plug everything back in together. All right, hopefully that helps you out. All right, so there you go. If you're tracking birds and you're having issues, hopefully this video helped you out. And if you like this kind of content, definitely subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. Would really appreciate it. Working hard to grow this channel. And with that being said, Peace out, happy shooting, and I will see you guys in the next video.